Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, did he really see a girl crying late at night? Or did he see a girl ghost crying late at night? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, if you have a real ghost story, share it with us. You can call in anytime. It's 855 855- 853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you want an ad-free version of the show along with advanced episodes, access to the archive, you can become a premium subscriber. Go through Apple Podcasts and you can try it three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes and my sister Kathy Gordon's in here today. Well, Hi. So sometimes, hi, hi, hi. So sometimes, you know, there's these stories that is almost like an urban legend, urban myth sort of story. So this is one of those stories that just makes me think about sometimes in your life when you've seen something, was it what you thought you saw or was it ever even there? Like you mm-hmm. saw something weird and you turn around and it's gone and you're like, oh, that guy took off fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was he ever even there? Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. I know. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes we see, like, is everybody really a person? Right. So you could be walking down the street in New York City, make eye contact with someone who was like, wow, that person looked at me kind of weird. Was it a real person? Exactly. Was it a ghost? You turn around. Was it some sort there? of alien being that's just planted there for you I to go, see? I go alien every time. <laughs> every time. Me, I default to ghost. I default to alien. It's a spirit of some sort because I don't want it to be an alien and then they're going to abduct me and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. I've read those stories. Mm-hmm. There's enough to worry about in this world, then I don't want to... And then they'll probably take me back to Arkansas, because that's where they pick everybody up, is in Arkansas. Well... And I have to try to get home. I better tell Tony. Yeah. I, well, that's right. <laughs> I could tell him. I've got somebody I know there. It's like, yeah. Tony, we were talking the other day, and we we are afraid that all the aliens get people from Arkansas. I, I just want you to be safe. <laughs> so go out in pairs. I don't know if that'll help you or what. (laughs) Don't let Harper go out by herself. Well, you know, it just used to be when we were growing up, there were always these weird stories about people who saw and were abducted by aliens, and they were always from, like, Arkansas. I thought you were going to say, there's always these weird stories about people from Arkansas. Well, (laughs) Well, there might be some of those, too. but (laughs) But, I mean, like, everybody was abducted. It seemed like they came from Arkansas or maybe Mississippi or somewhere like that. Is it like these places, like it's super specific. And I would be, why? And then they would draw a picture and it always looked the same. This is what we saw, you know. It was an alien spaceship. Like an egghead kind of big eyed, no nose, little tiny mouth, you know. I just don't want to be abducted by an alien. I just don't. Have you ever had alien things happen? No. I have. I think I have. Like, what happened to you? Well, like, I wasn't you? abducted, but one time I was driving from Colby, Kansas, up to McCook, Nebraska, and I had a friend with me, and we were driving, and all of a sudden there was some kind of weird craft that was just, like, parallel to the car, and it was w- very low. And we we just started driving as fast as the car would go, and it stayed right with us. And then I slowed were you down. Were guys smoking things? No, 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 no. We were not. And then I slowed down, and it slowed down, and it just kept hovering with us. And then finally, it just it, it just left. It just flew off. Yeah, I did. That happened to me. So when you go, oh, no, aliens, ha, huh? No, there are aliens. No, I'm saying I don't want to be. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, We were no. so scared. I cannot tell you how scared we were. We were shaking so bad. Who are you with? My you friend remember? Debbie Sheely. Oh, that is creepy. Yeah. And that was like way pre-drone days. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so there, were no like, there, there were nobody. no drones. There was no drones. And, the, you know, it was way, it was small. It wasn't like it was a big thing that, you know, was an airplane or something, you know. But the aliens would have had drones. Oh, true. They could have mm-hmm. had a little drone down there with a camera looking into your car. Mm-hmm. 
And then they were like, do we want these two? Nah. And then they went, wait a minute. <laughs> not only we do not want them, we're in Kansas. We're supposed to be in Arkansas. Let's get out of here. A R A R K A N S A S. I thought you said Kansas, not no, said, Arkansas. That's see, everybody always messes that up. <laughs> I'm telling you. So of course the aliens would. Yeah. Oh, I just that's something that just creeps me out. The whole idea of well, and you know, uh, you know what it's the, like out in Kansas at night, and the, the and it's just flat, and the you, just stars like it's just it's like massive, being in a planetarium, yeah. right? And then something weird will, like, you know, like, we'll be up there and you'll go, what is that? You know, and um, nowadays we can say drones, we can say sp- space station, shit. we can say all sorts of things now. But back then, when I was in high school, that was a long time ago. But I do and, believe there has to be intelligent life out there someplace. I'm I not agree. in denial of that. Okay, good. And if they're friendly and they were like, hey wanted to say hi or you know not like i'm gonna stick this anal probe up inside of you <laughs> like that's so unfriendly. we were so scared like my friend was crying like we were so afraid and it, it was just weird it just stayed right with us holy shit yeah I don't and, like and, and, and for a while like i would several minutes and i would at one point i said is it like i'm driving and i'm like I'm not going to look over there. Is it still there? She looks, she goes, it's still there. And like, we kept going, you know, like we were so afraid. We were shaking so bad. Oh my God. Okay. So that's that. So if you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's just creepy. Okay. So on to our story. That's not about aliens. It's about ghosts. Okay. It says, I have a few stories about strange things happening to me. But mo- they are mostly not ghost-related. Though the women on my mom's side of the family seem to be much more sensitive to the supernatural than I am, and I have a few of their stories. I will tell you my best or most compelling ghost story, though. It happened when I was in high school in a place called Hay Fork, a tiny town around six hours north of San Francisco. Hay Fork sounds like it would be six hours north of Oklahoma in the middle of Kansas. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hay fork it would be yeah. here, not in California. And this happened during what I think was my junior year. I'd been at a party with friends and was admittedly a little bit buzzed, but I was sober enough to be aware. Anyways, I got a ride home from a friend who had a large noisy truck that I didn't want pulling up outside my parents' house and waking them up to find me drunk and sneaking in. Instead, I had him drop me off at the end of the road I lived on, and I walked the mile or so, hoping the night air and the exercise size would sober me up a bit in case my mom and dad still caught me. Mm-hmm. I remember those days. This, this does sound like complete good teenage drunken at a party logic. Yeah. And nothing bad's ever going to happen. This yeah. is like right out of a movie. <laughs> You know, noisy truck. No, I'm going to walk that last ways. And you're walking and it's dark. Um, And it says I was getting close to home, nearing a culvert pipe that is large enough to be a small bridge where the creek that the road is named after runs under the road. I was startled to see someone standing on the other side of the road as I came around the corner before the culvert. Oh, my God. I soon became more concerned than startled when I saw it was a thin, pale girl around my age and that she seemed to be crying in her hands. I stopped and made my presence known by saying something like, hello, are you okay? Do you need help? I was just about to say that my house was close if she needed to use a phone when she looked up suddenly in shock at my voice before darting across the road and into the thick tangle of buck brush that runs along the stretch of it. My folks' place is on a road that is a good way outside of town, and the forest is very thick, and the terrain ranges from mountainous to hilly throughout. Not a great place to get lost or fall. I cautiously followed, saying not to worry. I just want to help. When I got to the spot, she had disappeared into the bushes. I saw that there were a thick bramble that I had to push through, getting scratched up by the thorn-like tangle of branches and immediately ran into a very steep, muddy embankment that no one I know could have climbed in the short time. 
I wasn't able to see her and definitely couldn't have done it without making noise. She was just gone. I climbed the 10-foot embankment with not a small amount of effort and at the top found the barbed wire fence that runs around my parents' property and beyond that, a thick overgrowth of blackberry vines. There was no way I could see that she could have made it past all these barriers and gotten out of sight and earshot so quickly. I couldn't even find a way to get past the berry bramble. She had just disappeared. I scrambled back down the way I came. I pushed through the bushes and stood there listening for what felt like 10 minutes, at least just listening for the sound of movement. But the only noises were the soft wind and faint echoing gurgling of the creek as it traveled beneath the road. I suddenly felt cold and the hair on my neck and arms stood on end. I was all at once frightened, more frightened than I've ever been in the woods before. So I quickly and cautiously walked the rest of the way home. The area is also known to have both bears and mountain lions. So I was trying not to run as that could provoke an attack. Good to know. Good to know. Just in case we're ever in the brambles. And I snuck into my room. I didn't sleep well that night and kept waking up feeling like someone else was in my room and had the lingering impression that the sound of crying had woken me. For many years after that, I would occasionally wake that way, feeling like I was alone and there was a lingering sense of deep sadness. This is my first and most unexplained personal ghost story. Thanks for reading it and keeping up the excellent work with the podcast, Robert. It really does sound like one of those urban myth stories of the girl by the side of the road crying, then you stop to help her, and then she's gone. Mm Because I've heard similar versions of that that story before. Well, and today it's like they they warn you not to because sometimes they will put somebody beside the road to act like that, and then you pull over, and then you get jumped by people that are out there. So there, but I'm thinking this was kind of pre that kind of stuff that we think about today. Um, I I think it, it I definitely think it but could be. I don't know if I saw a girl on the side of the road, especially you're walking past her, so you're not even driving past her. Mm-hmm. But I could see, you know, I would want to help that person too. Well, yeah. Where would she go? There's no place for her to go. So my guess is that there was never a girl there. Yeah, I, so I agree. So was it like a ghost thing? Was it your mind playing tricks on you? Yeah, I mean, were there drugs involved in the party? Well, or not, or had you been somebody put something in one of your drinks? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's those sorts of things that my mind goes to thinking could that have been a possibility? But I do know that if that had happened to me when I got home, I couldn't have slept well. I would have felt that all night long, and it and it appears to have lingered. Mm -hmm. Like he said that he wakes up occasionally still when there's this very cold, alone feeling. But you know, at one point, there could have been something that happened at that creek. True. And it was very tragic, and it could have been this woman's boyfriend or child or some sad thing happened. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a residual thing. Yeah. And then she disappears. Yeah, I'm going to go with, yeah, I think he saw a ghost. That's what I feel like just creepy mm-hmm. but there are those stories about you know you hear those that just kind of there's a lot of stories about distressed women in distress you know there's the hotel stories where the woman in black the woman in red the woman in white mm-hmm. and she's you know the jilted lover story or the man was married or whatever it is mm-hmm. there's a lot of stories like that and that's what it kind of was there a me car of. accident there you yeah know, when- could have been a number of different things Mm-hmm. So here's our next story. Hi, this is Sandy, and I live in Iowa. And I have quite a few ghost stories um, from over the years. The latest was, actually, it's second to the latest, but it was one of the more dramatic ones. I We are actually foster parents, so I've listened to you guys' story, sto- show for at least three years. But the latest one had to do with one of our foster kids. We had gotten her when she was about 15, and she left right before she was 18. But I had talked to her at one point about that I kept having a dream of a little girl that was downstairs basically just walking around in our hallway, 
And I had this dream at least five or six times before this girl came to our home. And we were out in the kitchen one time, and I didn't realize the girl saw spirits. And I started talking about this dream of this little girl, about 10, 12 years old, and with really long blonde hair, really full, really falling, really all the way down to her butt. And I started talking about it, and our foster child said, yeah, she's a spirit that lives down in your basement. (laughs) I was like, oh, shit. And I actually had one of my older sons was visiting our house at the time. And so before I said anything else to the foster daughter, I pulled my son, who was like 29, 30 years old, out in the garage. And I described this little girl that I kept seeing five or six times in the house. I pulled him out so the foster girl wasn't in earshot, couldn't hear what I was describing. Took my son out in the garage, and I'm like, I described what I kept seeing in my dream. And it was a girl about 10 years old, the long blonde hair, and I described her dress. It was like just past the knee, a couple layers of ruffles at the bottom, white, very, like, not really, really old, like from the 80s is what I described. And very vivid, you know, what she looked like, what she was wearing, all that. We come back in, and I had my foster daughter describe what she said this girl looked like that lived in our house, what the ghost girl looked like that lived in our house. And she described the exact same thing, same dress, same color of the dress, same ruffles on the dress, everything. Everything was the exact same thing. And she said the little girl would come up and usually hung up downstairs, but she'd come up and sit at the table while we were eating, that type of thing. She'd sit and play at the stairs and turn the spindles on our stairs at times, which the spindles are metal and they'd twist and you could they'd change directions and stuff at times. Not that we'd see, but we'd I'd come and hear the spindles would be turned, but we have a lot of kids, so the other kids could be doing that. It was just weird that she described this girl exactly the same that I described her, and I was outside with my son, and she was in here, so she couldn't have heard it. Anyway, that's my one story, and like I said, I have multiple stories because it's just weird that I see where things happen. So I will call back with the other stories. All right, thank you. Bye. So do you think that it was the same girl? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I'd like to know more history if she could dig up more history about this. Like, who is this girl? Why is she there? I mean, she's in your house. Is there some history? You said back she seemed to be wearing something from maybe the 80s. Yeah. Is that right? So that's not that long ago. Could you dig around a little bit and find out, okay, so who owned this house in the 80s? Did anything happen in this house? Um, And even if it didn't happen in the house... Maybe that's where the girl felt most at home later in her life if something did, and then she's back to there, you know? Um, Because it is unusual. She would dream about her, then her foster daughter mm -hmm. had, you know... You know, people have different abilities, and this foster daughter says that she can see spirits. She was able to to describe her, you know, to her. Um, Sometimes I think when we can't be... It isn't that literal for a lot of people that you can't just see um, somebody. Then their only option is to contact you through a dream. Maybe the little girl is trying to contact her, but she can't do it because this woman doesn't just see spirits. Right. So she contacts her in a dream. Yeah. And comes to her in a dream. She may be trying to tell her something. So, you know, I I would think, um, you know, try to... We've talked about this before in dreams. Maybe a possibility of... If it's possible in your dream, you know, you because sometimes I have recurring dreams and I think, here I go again. Well, instead of just thinking, here I go again, think, okay, here's this dream. What can I do? Can I look a different way? Is there something over there, over here, or follow her to where she's going or something? Because it feels like, I think when you have these sorts of repeat recurring dreams, you somebody's trying to tell you something. Yeah. And if there's a girl living in your basement, maybe good. it's her. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Listen to that. Hey, share your real ghost stories with us. You can call in 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you want an ad-free version of the show, you'll also get advanced episodes, access to the archive, 
Become a premium subscriber. Do that through Apple Podcasts. Try it three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thanks for listening.